Hey guys, this is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up, it's your girl Sasha Banks, Legit Fox, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife, Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. This Ugh. is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you're going to be listening to right here, youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson, available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little notify bell next to it if you're on YouTube. If you're listening to us on a podcast app, we ask that you try out the CastBox app and subscribe to Going In Raw on it. We've got a partnership with CastBox. It actually helps support Going In Raw in a very free and easy way just to uh, download that CastBox app. And then uh, hit subscribe to Going In Raw and check out uh, the app itself. It's a really great, clean way to listen to your podcast. We're also available uh, wherever other fine podcasts are. We're still on Spotify. We're still on uh, Google Play. Yeah. And all those other places. All of them. iTunes, of course. All of them. Uh, and then we're also available at uh, the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Very excited. Today, we have internet again, so we're doing the pre-show. The road to internet is complete, Larson. And post-show. And post-show. Very exciting stuff. At some point, we do need to start, I think, during the NXT post shows or the NXT 205 Live recap post shows. Truth exposed, Larson. Oh, yeah. We bring that back. Truth exposed. It requires some research. Very exciting. I'll do the, I'll do the research and I'll just give you notes. All right. That's fine. And so then, it's like non-news. And then you can just take... Oh, we got to do that today, too. And then you can just take for granted that I did my research properly. Ooh. Exactly. Ooh. Truth exposed. So like, what is truth? What is the actual part of the conspiracy versus what is crap Steve made up? Right, exactly. And I mean, it's a, it's a you know. If that's the case, then Dogman should be first one. Okay, that's fine. Dogman. It's truth exposed with question mark because it's a yeah, question as to whether Steve is exposed or truth exactly. question mark exposed. Yeah. Truth exposed. Hell no, Julian Morrison chat says the next road is the road to Hilton. Oh, mm, that's not a, that's a bumpy road. Yeah, filled with potholes. Oh yeah. And uh, like crazy people throwing mashed potatoes at you. Yeah, man. Anyways, uh, we're also available. Oh, like I said, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Great way to support going in raw. Uh, basically, you kick us money. It's kind of like a subscription service with tears. You subscription, you give us money, and then we give you stuff yeah. in return. I got yeah. a whole stack of those comic books. Like the, there's 100 comic books coming our way soon, but I also got the last stack of them that you got to sign today. All right. I got to get those out I this weekend. I guess I'll do that while you're putting the show together since we got to do things a little differently today. I'm going to be here by myself tomorrow doing I Patreon like stuff. Tomorrow. Really? Yeah, I got, a, I got a storage cabinet to build. I'll be sure to keep my pants on then. Well, I'll be back there. So. I have to do that regardless because this office, man, I didn't realize the office buildings, people just walk in. They yeah, just man. they just hop in. They're just like, hey, what's going on? Because it's like a business. It's a place of business. Yeah, it's a place of business. I knocked on, on like our, downs, our downstairs neighbor. It's like a spa body thing yeah, or whatever. yeah, yeah. And like when we first moved in, I wanted to ask them like if they ever had noise issues with this suite. Yeah. And so I knocked on the door and she said, oh, is the door locked? And I was like, no, I don't know. It's a and business. she said, oh, you could have just walked in. I'm like, it's like going to Taco Bell and knocking on the door. Pretty much. It's a weird concept to me. Anyway. You should try that next time you go to a, a fast food joint. And see what happens. Yeah. I might. I might try that. Anyways. You really should. Uh, so, yeah. Before we get started today, we need to give a shout out to somebody, Steve. We need to give a shout out to... At Foot Soup. So a lot of people have noticed that. So like, you know, new office, new set. We changed up the intro a little bit using that old footage, but we made it a little new different. logo, new logo, obviously. And uh, and so uh, uh, one of the friendos out there in our amazing friendo community uh, on the Twitter at Foot Soup, S-O-O-P, um, did us a remix of our going in. So that's why I liked our, our theme song. Bit more spunk to it, bit more energy, mm -hmm. uh, and this guy, he just did it. He just did it. Then he, I was like, hey, you know, we'd like to use this officially, you know, and he's and we'd like to credit you. And he says, you don't have to credit. I don't really care. But I was like, well, that's you know, I at least want to give you credit for it. So on the Twitter at Foot Soup, we want to uh, say thank you very much for the new official going in raw uh, remix version. Yes, thank you very of much. Our theme song. We're also at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash going in raw. Lots of great designs for that. So, yeah, all good stuff. Uh, this week we're talking about 205 Live and NXT. I was so tickled by NXT this week. There it was, was a, a lot it of was, fun. It was back to the NXT that I know and love where it, there's a lot of little things that just crack me up that yeah. absolutely kill me that I absolutely adore. But first, let's talk about 205 Live kicked off with Mustafa Ali versus Arya Another, another fun show. 
Yeah, no, it was it was it was shockful. I'm I really really liked the the main event was so much fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was one of those things where, you know, the crowd was into it by the end. Mm-hmm. About midway through the match, they realized that they were seeing something. That, that's kind of fun. That's also when the match really kicked into gear. Mm-hmm, yeah, in terms of, of of picking up the pace, exciting stuff. Right when they realized that, oh, this is this is getting good. Really, the only thing I didn't really care for this episode. I'm not into this Jack Gallagher Brian Kendrick tag team. I really wasn't before they Kendrick got hurt. I don't really feel like I'm into this now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it some more time because uh, Brian Kendrick just came back. I just don't feel like it's working. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll yeah, get to that. Because I'm, I'm curious. I want to know why. Because to me, I'm just like, okay, whatever. I just sort of take it for granted that it's there. So it doesn't really bug me. No, it doesn't but bother me. But it also me. doesn't do anything special for That's me. That's kind of what I mean. Doesn't, yeah. I mean, like, because everything, like this whole feud for the, you know, leading to the main event has been great. Yeah, sure. And all the matches have been really good. Yeah. Um, and then the last time we saw Jack Gallagher, he put on an amazing match against Mustafa Ali, mm-hmm. where he was doing stuff that he had never really done. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like this match, uh, he was just back to kind of boring heel Jack Gallagher. Yeah. So yeah. that's just kind of my concern. Uh, well, we'll get to it in a second. Yeah, yeah. This is a really fun match. Another really good Mustafa Ali match. I'm glad that he's ma- he's retaining his WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, the Isaac Clark. The, yeah, we, Iron yeah Man. we call it Isaac Clark. Iron Man mashup type thing. Well, yeah. What are the, there's one other super apropos um, uh, comparison that somebody made on Twitter. And for the oh. life of me, I can't remember what it is. I forget. But anyway, he's got the LED mask and everything. He's looks- got the Iron Man like. More than anything, thing. yeah. More than anything, I just like the dude change his outfit. Like it's 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 got texture now. And it's got you know, like the colors are muted. Yeah, I like that. I like all that. Mm-hmm. I just I hope he has a couple different variations. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's you know, the, I'm not sure how much the cruiserweights make, and I think they have to foot the bill for their costumes. Well, I think everybody has to pay for their own gear. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, but if you're Brock Lesnar, all you got to do, you know, you're at number one, you're making. A trillion dollars, and you're putting yeah. on a pair of shorts. I know that's a hundred dollars for the pair of shorts at most. You think it's a hundred? No, I don't. I mean, like it's a hundred bucks. It's like probably twenty bucks for the shorts, and he's got to get <laughs> right. custom printed and stuff with the Jimmy John's logo and stuff but, on yeah, it. Right, but exactly. Jimmy John's might pay for that. Yeah, I would think so. So who knows? Uh, but no, yeah, Musab Ali on, probably. I have a question. Yeah. So you know, you go to, you go on WWE Shop, and you buy a Brock Lesnar shirt, and you know it says Suplex City. You might have some words on back or a picture on back, but there's no Jimmy John's logo. Mm-hmm. Yet the ones he wears. Have the Jimmy John's logo on the back. So my, I, my, what I wonder is, does whoever's printing up WB shirt have a special silkscreen situation just for his shirts? Probably. Or does he take some shirts and get them done separately himself? I don't think Brock does anything. Well, yeah. He probably has whoever his person is have the WWE. WWE and Jimmy John's probably works all that out. That's yeah. my guess on yes. that one. I don't think Brock does a damn thing. Well, it's probably Paul Heyman in WWE works everything out. Like kayfabe, yeah. Do you no, think, no. I think I think you think he does. Yeah, I think like I mean I've heard that Heyman's involved in Brock's contract negotiations. negotiations yeah, stuff, so I'm sure he's involved somewhat in handling some other aspects. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised if Heyman's company, what is he called, something for something, something like looking that. for Larry, something like was that. that it? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if like one of their employees could be. could be did it that wouldn't surprise could me be. i'd be very surprised if paul Heyman was calling up a silk a t-shirt guy and jimmy johns and getting the logos and assets prepared seems beneath his pay grade oh i don't know he might do it initially and then after that <laughs> like make sure the situation's worked out and, and right. everybody understands what needs to be done and then after that there's not much else for him to do if make we sure ever get to interview paul Heyman, i want to ask him about that yeah yeah the minutia of his of his job it is interesting in of, of, oh, i agree ac- acting as brock lesnar's advocate yes if we get that opportunity can we please do predictions first come up with a list of minutia questions yes, yes. and you predict one thing like else. the silk screen stuff yes exactly yeah <laughs> oh man anyways um so this was a fun match. Mustafa Ali went over with an 054, not a surprising. Yeah, uh, Davari was working over Mustafa Ali's back a lot during mm-hmm. this match. Um, they were telling a pretty decent story with that. Um, Davari before the match uh, dropped a promo saying that uh, Mustafa Ali dropped the ball um, at WrestleMania, didn't get the job done, and therefore he should be back of the line when it comes to cruiserweight title opportunities. Yeah, do you agree with that? Kind of, right? Well, I don't think I don't necessarily think he should be back of the line. I don't know if there should be a line. Yeah. Everybody should have an opportunity. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's like the deli counter where you draw a number and then it's your turn. Kind of feel like that's how it should be. No. <laughs> <laughs> how they're going to handle it eventually. The closer we can get wrestling to a deli counter situation is, is good for me. 
You, hey, you want some cheese? <laughs> that's like my favorite that's scene. A, in the, that's the best line from the wrestling. Yeah, I know. the re- That's the What's, best. From the, want some cheese, lady? Want some cheese, lady? <laughs> want some cheese, lady? Anyways. After that, we had a... Start smacking his face with it. Yeah. <laughs> Quit. Uh, Drake Maverick was backstage uh, dropping a, a promo talking about how uh, Buddy Murphy had earned himself a title opportunity. Yeah. However, um, there was an issue that came up that disqualified him. They went to He's a, a previous, previous He's film thing bastard. where he fails his way in. Yeah, by like three pounds. It's funny because... By two and a half pounds He's or on so. there looking as confident as ever. And uh, Danilo, the ref's there with like the, the, the measuring, the thing, the output. Yeah, and the little uh, readout thing. We can't see it, but Drake looks at it and he's like... Excuse me, buddy. Can I have your shirt? Like he's got a five pound shirt on. Yeah, I know. Takes it off, gives it to you, throws it at him. You know, and uh, gets he gets on the scale and he says, "As you can see, two hundred seven point five. You're not eligible to to take on Cedric Alexander at, at largest Royal Rumble. At largest Royal Rumble. And then buddy says, like, well, I have like a whole week left to drop the weight. Yeah, which is exactly which is lit. Is Usually exactly the what I was thinking. Is done the day before the event. And then they have 24 hours to put it back on. Yeah, or to bulk to, up. Yeah, again. to put as much weight on as they exactly. Can, yeah. yeah, and he says, no, I'm sorry, you knew the terms of the arrangement. Then now it's now this point here. So I'm assuming Buddy Murphy has maybe like a visa issue, or they just called an audible. I don't know. Yeah. I I mean, it could be anything. Yeah. But that audible kind of sucks. Well, for Buddy Murphy, yeah. Well, yeah, but also for us. Oh, I know. It would have been a great match. It would have been a fantastic match. I'm sure, we'll still gonna, I'm, still, I'm sure we're still going to get it. Who comes out of this gauntlet next week? Is it next week? Yeah. It's got to be next week. Yeah, it's got to be yeah. next week because go home. it's Friday's largest rumble. Who wins, the, who wins that? Well, it made it sound like that Mustafa Ali and Drew Gulak are going to be in it. Because they gave promos. About oh, it. yeah. They gave promos. Drew would be great. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see that match mm-hmm. at Largest Royal Rumble. I'm looking forward to the Rumble, man. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm really looking They're forward really to They're really putting their all into it. They really are. Well, you heard how much they got. Right? Yeah. Well, allegedly, yeah. A Is lot. It, who had that? Who had that info? I Meltzer? Meltzer. I didn't notice it in the... Yeah, I was looking for it in the newsletter. I didn't notice it. If it's actually $20 million, this is awesome. They're like, ah, oh, women's, re- <laughs> women's revolution. Here's $20 million. Okay, sounds good. Anyways, uh, yeah. So no, Drew Gulak. I think that would make sense. Yeah, it'd be something different. Yeah, because I think something tells me how great would it be if Mustafa Ali starts the gauntlet match? Because gauntlet matches when one guy starts, two yeah, people yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever like uh, wins has to stick around for the next guy to come yeah, out. Yeah. So it obviously really benefits you to be the last guy. Yeah. If it's Mustafa Ali starts and in- Drew Gulak finishes. Yeah. And Drew Gulak barely like or you know Mustafa Ali barely loses. The whole episode should be this match. First of all, it should be an hour long gauntlet. Oh, match. I agree. It actually has to be. I it's love not, gauntlet matches. And if it's not, then they're dropping the ball. And yeah, yeah. Mustafa Ali should last fifty eight minutes. Yeah. And at the end, yeah. Dragon Sleeper, probably. Yeah. Like, it really, really feed into the idea that Mustafa Ali is the heart of yeah. 205. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He withstands everybody except So Drew loses can't make it till the end. at largest rumble, and then, uh, but looks strong doing it. Yeah. Looks really strong doing it. Yeah. I mean, they can really... Drew, Drew's character, especially right now in his entering style, is really the type of thing that can help get Cedric super over and get Drew over. But that'd be a great story. Um and then they they circle back around to Buddy Murphy here in town or here in the states. I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Then we had okay. So let's talk about Gallagher and Kendrick. You're here. Here's the thing. I think that you're trying to get at. There is basically a reboot when Enzo got the boot. Yeah. And this didn't reboot here. Well, I mean, Jack Gallagher has different pants. Right. He's got pants. He seemed like he rebooted his style in his match against Mustafa Ali during the the tournament. Hmm. But here, it was just back to what they were doing before. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like, like neither of them are really into it. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah. Brian Kendrick just didn't really seem into it last night, period. Yeah. That's kind of the vibe I got. <laughs> well, they were fighting. Oh, I can't wait till we get to talk about NXT and uh, War Machine. Oh, yeah. And their their opponents. Yeah. I freaking love how that. Come, how come they didn't have their sleeves rolled up with a pack of smokes? <laughs> I know. There's so much to talk about. That. Yeah, anyways, I can anyways. go 30 minutes on JC Metro. Anyways. 
So I don't know. There's, you know, when you compare it to the the rest of this burgeoning 205 Live uh, tag division, mm-hmm. this is far and away the least exciting team. I feel like I agree. I I didn't really like it in the first place. No, I didn't either. Um, the whole setup for their partnership was kind of lame. Yeah, no, I agree. But I mean, you know, they're. I'm willing to give it time. I like both the wrestlers. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, talk crap about them. I just don't feel like this is is like the partnership the way it's being booked right now is necessarily working as well as it could it's definitely not the most exciting thing in the world no. uh anyways they they took on two jobbers i don't know what their names were and this match was probably more competitive than i thought it was gonna be too <laughs> wasn't it yeah a little bit yeah yeah because I, I think i think i was a tad distracted with this i don't know i think Lacey came home from work and started talking about something and so like i had to like not look at the tv during this match but then by the time she started talking about it, by the time she stopped talking and started chasing alabama who was probably doing something bad i look back at the tv and i'm like why is this match still happening I know. I know. <laughs> right yeah yeah, and it was it's, it felt like the whole match was just forearms, like everybody just kept hitting each other with forearms. Mm-hmm, yeah, that was the whole match. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's this like really a, wasn't that into I mean, it. I feel like that's a match I could put on if it's just forearms. Yeah, like I could I could fake a forearm. Yeah, just hit right here, in the collarbone area. Exactly. Yeah, that's all you gotta do. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Kendrick uh, picked up the win with Captain Hook. Mm-hmm. Captain's Hook. Captain's Hook. Yeah. Um, and one of his opponents tapped out. I feel like Brian Kendrick should be more pirate themed. Like, okay, slice bread number two. That's not like a pirate thing. Well, that's that's you know something you used to do prior to this pirate gimmick he's doing. <laughs> You're right. He should have changed that to like I don't know the scurvy drop or the uh, call it walking the plank or something because Walk he walks plank. up the ropes. You know. Oh, he walks up the rope. Yeah, I like scurvy drop though because yeah, it's didn't true. all pirates have scurvy? Like all those boats were like affected by scurvy. Well, it's because they didn't have enough vitamin C. Right. Yeah. Well, that's why scurvy happens. But yeah. that happened a lot on boats. Yeah. Until, they didn't bring until citrus. Bring in citrus fruits. On right. The boat. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What is the what, crow's nest? Is that what the little thing at the top of the mast is called? Oh, I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. Maybe someone's up there, you know, scanning the horizon. You got to check out the talk about maritime uh, sea stuff. Lexicon. Fiction. fiction. Yeah. The terror. Oh, my wife AMC. watched that. She said it was really good. Oh, man. It's so good. Big monster bear. All right. Ooh. That's what it's about. A big monster bear. Ooh. On a boat? Um, well, the boat gets trapped in packed ice. The whole thing is they're trying to find the Northwest Passage. Which is like I feel like you're telling me too much already. Uh, oh okay. no, it's this, no, it's in the de- It's the the set design is amazing. I really the production wish value is great. Bear in a boat, and like that's that's terrifying. You got to stay away from this giant bear that's on the boat. <laughs> it and shows up. I mean, it shows up. Claustrophobic. It heck, shows up man. on the boat while they're at sea. Well, at sea, but they're no, they're packed in Not ice. Not interested. <laughs> I tried. AMC, I'll, I tried. I, I wish this boat crossing the Atlantic and they find out they have a stowaway giant bear. <laughs> Look, you and it's I terrified. can... terrified. How about this? You and I can make that. We'll make that into a comic book. Well, it's going to seem like a ripoff of the terror. We can't do it now. Well, we'll make it like... It, it's not the Royal Navy in the 1800s. All right, it's like some... It's, 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 it's like a giant yacht yeah. in the 80s. Oh, even better. Like and, rich and everybody's people. everybody's like coked out of their mind. Yeah. And they find out they have a stowaway giant bear while they're crossing the Pacific. What do we call it? That sounds great. What do we call it? Bear terror. <laughs> The bear. The bear. Yeah, there you go. You know what bums me out, though, is that for some reason, the alienist on TNT keeps tweeting at me. Yeah, that's weird. I wish it was AMC's The Terror. I wish they would tweet at me because I have all sorts of great questions. Maybe you should tweet at them and they'll respond. I need to do a terror freaking how podcast. Often, how often does the alienist tweet you? Weekly? Well, it was for like two weeks. That's strange. Yeah. They haven't recently, though. Oh, all right. I think because I kind of clown them a little bit. I just tweeted. I just tweet. I just retweeted them with the words "what the," <laughs> and then of course all the friendos yeah. started like getting in on that. Yeah, asking them why they're tweeting at me, and then they stopped. They open up a whole can of can of worms there, yeah. man. Anyways, Mustafa Ali interview saying that uh, the gauntlet match is another opportunity for him to you know take that title back. Drew Gulak promo. Once again, in front of a TV. Yeah. He says he's going to make... No PowerPoint presentation, though. People, He's going to make people tap out. If you get near me, I'm going to tap you out. Yeah. The most... Uh, the bestest submission ma- uh, person in WWE. Yeah. I don't know the exact... Alex C. says, uses. Larson, cut this bit from the podcast and make Stowaway Bear yourself. He wants you to go rogue and make Stowaway Bear. I read that. It's like he wanted me to play Stowaway Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Give me food. Uh, Lucha House Party, the the big blow off between Lucha. I think maybe a blow off between Lucha House Party and uh, yeah, it felt like that. 
Atami, and Tazawa. Oh, man, this was great. Because they were hyping this up big time over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, so it was uh, Lince Dorado, Grand Metalik against Hideo Atami, Akira Tazawa. Match started out slow. They really let it build, gave it a ton of time. And by the end, there is all sorts of crazy stuff happening. Mm-hmm. It was fantastic. Yeah. Springboard moonsaults and suicide dives. I loved – here's here, one thing I really liked was a little character thing. Hideo Atami trying to rip the masks off yeah. of the luchadors. Yeah. And Akira Tozawa not giving an F. Yeah. He was like – there was one great shot. It was really good TV Oh, yeah, direction. yeah, with uh, Akira Tozawa in focus in the background and Hitami doing what he was doing in the foreground. And he really sort good. of looks over and shrugs it off. Yeah. Like not a big deal. It was. It's interesting when Hitami will do that, which is you know hugely disrespectful to luchadors to try to rip their masks off and then get in their face and yell at them, "Respect me." Yeah. No, I like that. That yeah. was really good stuff. Yeah. Um, at the end, though, uh, Tazawa was setting up to kick Grand Metalik while Hitami's trying to rip his mask off. Grand Metalik gets out of the way, so Tazawa kicks uh, Hideo Itami square in the face. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Tazawa gets dropped. Lucha House Party climbed to the top rope. Um, Lince Dorado yeah. hits a shooting star press on Tazawa. Uh, Hitami gets an elbow from Grand Metalik. Blue Chow's party wins. Um, Kalisto comes down the ring for a celebration. He starts dancing. He brings some like noisemakers. It's great. Yeah, no, it was great. It was absolutely stellar. It was so much fun. It was um, fantastic. Yeah, that's, that was that was great. So hopefully they're going to. And Drake Maverick is doing commentary and. Uh, Percy Watson was really putting up. Man, we got to do something about the stowaway bear thing. It's getting over. <laughs> well, yeah, man, chat. absolutely. Uh, no reason why it isn't. Stowaway it's bear. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Let's do a comic book. I've been, I've been wanting to do a comic book. All right, right. stowaway bear. We need because we need to do a comic book to pitch to. Because I'm not I'm not comfortable pitching like giving you know our manager guy a copy of the Going in Raw comic to right. pitch to. I want like a, a true narrative, an original story, an original story. All right, stowaway bear. Yeah. 80s, a yacht going across Pacific. Like, can it be like a, some congressman on a boat? Okay. Yeah, and they all get mauled. Well, eventually. Yeah. They got to try to get away from Stowaway Bear. But then on this one, boat. one uh, female intern who gets treated like crap by these asshole rich people, she's the one yeah. who is able to maybe save some of the better ones, or just she's the one who's able to conquer the bear in yeah. the end. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah. good. That's good. There's your story. It's like political, also. Yeah. <laughs> That's all good stuff. Jillian Moore says it needs to take place in the Bering Sea. <laughs> now you're going too far. Yeah. Anyways, NXT. This is fantastic. Fun show. This is great, man. Look at everything we got. We got some great Johnny Gargano stuff. A Hoss fight. Ricochet match. War Machine match. Shayna Baszler is amazing. Oh, man, that was great. That stuff was great. And there's one line that has absolutely killed me. And then, and then we had... Uh, uh, hold on. There was one thing. Right. Oh, the undisputed era photo shoot. Oh yeah, that was maybe my f- my wrestling segment of the year. Oh yeah, beats everything. Beats AJ Nakamura. Beats uh, I don't know what's the best match so far this year. Oh, Gargano, Gargano Almas. It beat everything. Anyways, kicked off with a Johnny Gargano promo. Him and Candice LeRae were in the ring. He's saying he's back where he belongs. His mm-hmm. home NXT. Yeah. Um, he they, they finally kind of rid themselves of Tommaso Ciampa, mm-hmm. but there's a couple more things they need to take care of. Yeah, namely, uh, Candice mm-hmm. will be taking on Zelina Vega in the main event for the show, and then once they finish with the, the their issues with Almas, then Gargano has his sights set on that NXT Championship. Yeah, uh, it was pretty lengthy. Yeah, um, they're both fairly dorky, but it works. Uh, next up, Killian Dane promo. He was outside. Yeah, and it was in profile, kind of three quarters it, for of a profile. second for for a, for the a bit, and then he turns to the camera. Yeah, at the end of it, and yeah. it really freaked me out. Yeah, wasn't huge on that because it was very scary. What's scarier, Killian Dane, stowaway bear on a yacht? Well, stowaway, you can, you can, I can run from Killian Dane because he can't be that. He can't be. Fa- well, and also, you're not in an enclosed. A vessel out on sea. Do you know sea. how fast bears can run? I know. Fast. 30 miles an hour. I know. Insanely fast. Imagine trying to escape a bear through the corridors of a yacht. The fastest Usain Bolt has ever run at his fastest. Like 28 or 26, is like right? like 28, 29. Yeah. Maybe 30. Bear is faster. Bear is faster than that. Just on a normal day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can, you know, I don't know how fast I can run, but it's not very fast. 12. <laughs> if that. I don't know. 12 miles. That's fast. That's super fast. 
Yeah, I think I think on a bike you're at twelve, like a, like leisurely on a bike. Yeah, twelve is, is too much. Twelve Eight. is way too fast. Eight. Even at, that is like that's like a seven at a sp- at a, like a, sp- a seven at a sprint mile. at a sprint. I think I might be able to get ten. All right, maybe maybe I don't know. Especially these days, my fat ass lumbering. Like I'm I'm Buddy Murphy fat. <laughs> Uh, next, we had uh, Ricochet's uh, uh, debut match at Full Sail. Yeah, yeah. He's the best. He is the best versus Fabian Eichner. How does Ricochet do that 630? How does he do How do you know that you're not going to land on your know, head? That's a lot of rotations. That's so many rotations. And then how do you know you're li- going to land where you land? Because he practices. He's oh good at God. it. Did you, did you see his back? When they, when they first, like when he first took off his little jacket thing, they were kind of in medium close up, right? So you can see like from his like his torso, right? Yeah, yeah. And like he turned his back to the camera and holy it's crap. Jacked. It is jacked. I know. I think he he and uh, Montez Ford were going back and forth on Twitter about deadlifting a bunch. I think he said he could like deadlift over 500 pounds or something. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just that back was like obscene. And like the definition of his traps up here is unreal. Yeah, it's awesome. He's the best. He wins with a, a 6.30 centon. Gave it a pretty good interview afterwards. No, I liked it. I liked it a lot. It was great. It was great. Um, no, all, all that has like been, that's I in the past I, for me. I can't wait till his first uh, solo takeover match. It's going to be spectacular. Velveteen Dream, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be really good. Uh, next up, we had a great EC3 oh, video package. Great. For him, he was talking about being uh, the one percent guy. Three percent body fat. <laughs> he said ninety-seven percent charm, was it? And three percent body fat. I don't yeah. know. It was 97 percent something funny. Um, yeah, no, it was fantastic. He was just lounging around somebody's penthouse. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was his. Yeah, he probably, they probably just rented. He for probably afternoon. lives in the same little condo area that all the NXTers live at. Uh, but no, it was it was fantastic. I like his song. His song is really growing on me. Uh, next up, Lars Sullivan was outside. The cameraman was like down kind of under him mm-hmm. a little bit. So his his man chest area was like very prominent. Yes. Um, and he was talking. About, I, I like when he talks like I can I get what he's saying, but like I can't help but stay. He's a weird mouth. It's like remember in I am legend. Those zombies that will that Fresh Prince was fighting and they're like their mouths go extra tall, mm-hmm. extra wide. Mm-hmm. His does the same thing. Mm. His mouth sometimes looks computer generated. Next up, we had War Raiders versus, yes, JC and Chris Metro. Metro. I think we've seen them before. We have seen them before. Yeah. They're amazing. Why aren't they on all the time? Yeah. Did they wear jeans last time? Well, they kind of wore jeans this time. They were tighter, though. They were really tight. I thought they wore, like, blue jeans last time. Yeah, maybe, but they were still pretty on the time. I mean, it was like Dean Ambrose tight. These were tighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These were, were like, denim tights, basically. Yeah. Um, but they kept the white t-shirts. They kept the loot. Yeah. The white t-shirts with sort of the quitter, uh, collars, yeah. collars. Uh, I am disappointed. They did not have their Sleeves cigarette packs. rolled up with a pack of smoke. But last time we saw them was a really long time yeah. ago. It was a really long time ago. <clears throat> um, and so I'm sorry, I get distracted by chat sometimes. Uh, it was a really long time ago. So why haven't they like developed more? They haven't gotten their repackage yet. No, they haven't. Anyways, like someone we saw later, like Kona Reeves, he's got his repackage. Oh, we're going to talk a lot about yeah. that. Anyways, War Raiders won in an absolute squash. Oh, my. Yeah. Just dominating. Fallout. Pin. Yeah. War Raiders. That's hard to say. War Raiders. War Raiders wins. But then Win. it, it feel, I feel stupid saying War Machine anymore because it's, it's old. War Engine. War Engine. What did somebody say this morning? Confrontation contraption. <laughs> I said uh, animosity animus. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, no, they're great. They're great. They're just yelling and chewing on stuff. I'm doing this now. Yeah, this next part was my my favorite. Oh, this though. was great. Shayna Baszler, Baszler, uh, outside of some sort of meeting that Serena Deeb, one of the coaches there now. Yeah. At the oh, it's, it's like it was a woman's locker room. It was a woman's locker room. So Serena Deeb was giving uh, like a pep talk, right before Shayna Baszler goes in. She says. They're having a meeting right now. I'm a little, I'm a little bit, bit late, late, but I break the rules. <laughs> and she's carrying her belt with her. I'm a little bit late, but what can I say? I don't pay attention to the rules. Yeah. That's the nerdiest, most high school shit I've ever heard in my life, but it was so great. <laughs> it was so fantastic. She said, 
<laughs> I'm a little bit late to this meeting, but I break the rules. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she goes in there and just starts talking crap. And everybody's like all awkward. She's like, hey, Serena, just chill out. And then she starts like talking, like running people down like, saying, in if, a if, general if this, sense. That's how it's going to be now. Either you get you get behind me in line or you get out of the way. Yeah. And if anybody doesn't want to do that, then step to me now. And then Dakota Kai <laughs> gets she, up and starts walking out. And she's like, I just want to fill my water up. Yeah. <laughs> and then Shayna's all. She's all getting in her way. Yeah, getting in her way. It's like, what are you, where are you going, Dakota? Where are you going, Dakota? It's like, I'm just filling my water up. And uh, and then she starts to like awkwardly follow her out, but doesn't yeah. really do anything after yeah. that. Yeah, this follows her to the door, basically. Oh, man, that was awesome. That was so good. Anyways, uh, next up, my other favorite part of this was Kona Reeves video package. What did he call himself? Like fancy or something? Like no. <laughs> what did he call himself? I'm the... What, how did you not write this down in your notes? Usually you're so good. I know, usually I am. I'm like the the cheesiest. I don't know. He, he was, it's so, it was like a really bad. Somebody mentioned the finest. The, the finest. The finest. You'll see the the NXT's finest. I think. And they didn't give him a new name. Mm -mm. He's still Keanu Reeves. Hey, I'm the finest. Hey. He has really long hair now, though. He has really long hair. Somebody in the chat uh, mentioned something about. How he kind of like very superficially comes off as a ticking time bomb. Oh, New Japan. yeah, yeah. I don't think he's, I don't think that's, I think that's like <laughs> NWO ticking time bomb. Exactly. Alex, he said that in chat. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of ticking time bomb, a little bit of J NWO John Morrison. Yeah, they had that kind of slow-mo shots got, of, he's the, got, of the breeze blowing through his hair and, and he's stuff. got kind of a wonk eye. Like one of his eyes is like going in a little bit. And so it's like, I don't know. I, it's hilarious. Whatever yeah. it is, I'm on board. It's hilarious because yeah. it's so bad. It's so bad. I'm the finest. I'm FBI finest. agent Johnny Utah, the finest. Anyways, uh, next up, uh, there is a little Pete Dunn. He was walking away. He was about to get in his Uber to get on the plane to go to England, mm -hmm. hang out with his buddies mm -hmm. and. Also, there's been all, they've been having all sorts of great, like on Trent Seven's Instagram, all sorts of really great pictures of them together. Oh, yeah. So they're kind of building this on Instagram. Cool. Um, and they all look like badasses these days because Tyler Bate, like his hair is all like messed up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the uh, interviewer asked uh, Pete Dunn about Roderick Strong turning, turning on, on him. him. Yeah. And he just kind of said, we'll, we'll address that later. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. When I get back, you'll find out what I have to say about this. So in a couple of weeks, is hopefully. Hold on. No, no, no. He didn't what? finish there. He said, in a couple weeks, you'll find out what I, what I think about this. I'm going to rip his head off. <laughs> <laughs> you just, a couple weeks, you just told us you're going to rip his head off. I don't have to wait a couple weeks. That's obviously how you feel about it. I'm going to rip his head off. <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah, he is. Uh, next, a really fun no DQ match between Lars Sullivan and Killian Dane. Man, Lars Sullivan was doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh my god! I know he was coming off the top onto a the gr onto the ground a lot. Yeah, man, he still got like his knees all messed up still. Yeah, man. Um, no, this was fun. The crowd was super into this. They were chanting "Hoss fight" beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, what's his face? Killian Dane got like his nose all. Yeah, he was bleeding a ton out of his. He nose. was bleeding a bunch out of his nose. It was just bastards, man. Like yeah. Lars Sullivan was big old. He still freaks me out though. Like when he, especially when he comes out and he screams, his mouth goes like all the way down here. It's weird. He's like, oh. He's got a weird mouth, but he's awesome. He is awesome. Yeah. Killian Dane is awesome. He's going coast to coast again. Yeah, I was bummed out that he didn't do that. I know. That would have been great. A lot of fun. Uh, in the end, uh, after some chairs and a table spot, Lars picked up the win with a freak accident on yeah. a couple of chairs. Yeah. Really fun match. No, this was fantastic. And it was it was long, too. Yeah. It was a good uh, uh, send-off for Killian Dane. He looked strong in defeat. Mm -hmm. No, he looked great. All right. Let's talk about this Undisputed Era video package. It was very nwo I, do you, How much time do you have? Because this is great. Yeah, it was very so. There, yeah, it was totally NWO esque. They're so walking. It was like an end. They're, they're like the NWO NWO. They, they are the NWO NWO <laughs> exactly. So they're walking into this photo studio, and Kyle O'Reilly is is leading the pack, and he says something like, "All right, I'm ready for my close up." <laughs> and meanwhile, Bobby Fish. Is is coming up from behind because he's got his wonk his wonky leg. Yeah, but he wasn't on crutches. 
No, okay, yeah, he wasn't. I guess he just had a, a knee brace or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But he had a limp going. And it looked like he wanted to say something to Adam Cole. Like, hey, why is my title on Roderick Strong's shoulder? Yeah. But he didn't say anything. It just, like, when he came, it looked like he wanted to see, he was like. Yeah. No, I noticed that, too. And I thought he was going to say, he, what? That was mine. I'm just injured. Where is the precedent for that? But yeah, Adam yeah. Cole says, all these titles staying in in the family or whatever he said. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. And then Kyler Raleigh was says, yeah, look at your Adam Cole title. It looks great. <laughs> I watched this thing like two or three times <laughs> to catch all the details. Oh, my gosh. Um, so anyways, and they just they stand in front of the in front of the cameraman and they start doing their posing. Um, oh, it was it, it was, was fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, it was great. It was Absolutely great, uh, and then they like they, they did, to cap it off. They were like they all did their pose, and then it went, and then like it went you get to the like, actual picture. You get yeah. the actual picture. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was pretty great. And then I think I think on like NXT's Twitter account, they showed off some of the other pictures where at some point everybody but Bobby Fish took their shirts off. <laughs> <laughs> they were all doing their poses. <laughs> oh man oh that's great it was great uh finally our main event candace oh, LeRae. Hold on. karen says here that bobby fish was wearing dark uh trousers but he was limping around with his knee brace and limited crutches at the tapings oh uh, okay so yeah he still won't leg yeah he's gonna I mean, he just had surgery about a month or two ago so mm -hmm. he's gonna be out of action for another four months probably yeah uh main event candace LeRae versus Zelina vega that was a lot of fun this was great yeah um, pretty early on, uh, Andrade almost comes out to distract Candice. Um, Johnny Gargano, as promised, he said earlier, if, if almost got involved, he would get involved too. He comes out the ringside to make sure no further distractions. Um, in the end, Candice picked up the win with Gargano escape. You had both Johnny and Candice wrestling, mm -hmm. um, putting uh, uh, Vega and uh, Almas in Gargano escape at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um so that bit of business is taken care of. Yeah, that's for done. For the Gargano family. They're on to become faces on SmackDown. Next, Gargano drops a promo, challenges Aleister Black. Aleister Black comes out and says, next week, it's on. This is what you want, Johnny. You can have it next week. And by the way, would you like some ice cream? You're really into the ice cream thing. I have many different flavors, including Rocket Pop. Okay, what else? Just Rocket Pop. You said no, many different... No orange sickles? No. Rocket Pop has three many flavors on it. Three many flavors? Did you say so, three many? So three too many? Or many as in three? <laughs> Find out next week. <laughs> I'll give you what you want. Oh. <laughs> Alex C. <laughs> Almost is quantum leap engaged. I, I didn't go back to see how much of a quantum leap it was. Oh, I mean, like as soon as the match was over and Almas and Vega left the ring, Gargano grabbed the mic. We never saw them again. Right. But with, Bob, with Bobby Roode, we didn't even see him leave the ring. It was a true quantum leap. Yeah. It was pin. Once you saw pin, the next shot had him not in it, and you never see him again. Yeah, I know. I have to tell you, man. Would you like some Napoleon ice cream? It really is the best. Three flavor, three many flavors. Three many flavors. <laughs> what is it? Is it three more than it should be? Is it three too many or three as in? Is it many uh, as in, in three? In totale, all three. Yes. Three many. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm gonna all tell the you. flavors and push-ups too. <laughs> all the flavors. How many? Three many. <laughs> Everybody. Oh my oh, god. Goodness. All right, before we carry on with questions, Steve, we got one bit of business to take care of. Oh shit. So, uh we uh, You know what? What? We Nothing took part in a, a WrestleMania challenge. Yeah, I don't remember agreeing challenge. This. We I did. Agreeing we agreed this. to it. And uh neither of us won. In fact, we lost. Um and so uh I guess our punishment for it's a, yeah. taking the loss yeah. is the good fellows over at Busted Wide Open. Yeah. Um, get opportunity to gloat about their victory, so I guess we should just roll that now, huh? We could have, we could, we if if AJ Styles had lost, there were so many opportunities there down the wire. Yeah, for me to pull off the victory yeah, if, for if, Team if, Going and Raw. If Nakamura had won, then you yeah, would have won, yeah. right? But we do, we do suggest. We're not saying this because we have to, because we lost the bet. 
that we're about to run a promo for Busted Wide Open podcast. Yeah. Uh, and without, we wouldn't have done this if we wouldn't have been like cool with the pod. Like, check out the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're saying that as a shoot. Yes. And now we have to run this promo. Yes. Be Take up our precious airtime because we're idiots and lost predictions. A couple of these guys who don't even, when are they going to be on YouTube? Are they on YouTube? They're not on YouTube. When are they going to get on YouTube? All right, we need to teach them how to podcast. Oh my goodness! But that being said, they are fantastic. You should yes, definitely check, check out, out their check podcast. Them out. Here we go. Let's roll. Let's let's roll the promo. Hi, this is Nick Howell, and this is Sir Ian Dangerous, and we are from the Busted Wide Open Podcast, where we cover the hottest topics in sports entertainment and the world of professional wrestling. So this year, Stephen Larson were kind enough to take us up on our challenge to see which podcast would win if we went head to head in direct competition on a WrestleMania Pickums challenge. And as it turned out, Nick, you got the highest score. I sure did. And congratulations to you, sir. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Now, thanks to an audience vote, the two podcasts were apparently playing for the ability to cut a victory promo on the other show. So I guess we're up, Nick, or rather you are. So uh, take it away. You got it. <clears throat> I'd like to think this podcast will be better off after Vince McMahon is dead, but the fact is it's going to get taken over by Stephanie McMahon and his Doofus son-in-law whoa, whoa, and the rest whoa, of his whoa, stupid whoa, family. Whoa, no, no, dude. Hey, wait. That's the pipe bomb promo, dude. You can't use that for this. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Here it goes again. Let me just say, after carrying the belt that proclaimed me the real world champion, I'm going to tell you all with a tear in my eye. This is the greatest moment in my life. When you no, walk dude, around in no, this like- No, no, that, that's, that's Ric Flair from Royal Rumble 92. Look, could you please just cut our promo so we can let them get back to the friend overse here? Of course, of course. You're right. I'm sorry. Here it goes. You don't know what hard times is, Daddy. Hard times is when a uh. textile walking around this country out of work. Okay, and that's hard times. Take your 33 and a third chance minus my 25% chance, and you got eight and a third chance of winning at sacrifice. Look, forget it. Uh, thank you to Stephen Larson for accepting our you challenge. You sit there and you thump your Bible and you say your prayers okay. and you talk about your John 316. Okay. And, and thank you for listening to Busted Wide Open and Going in Raw. And we look forward the cream to, of the crop. We look forward to more of these competitions in the future. Thanks, guys. How, how's that, man? Yeah, yeah, it was real good, dude. All right, Larson, it's time to end. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks, uh, Busted Wide Open, for that promo. Very entertaining Why stuff. are you thanking them? They, we lost a bet. Well, That's the only reason they're no, on but here. But also, thanks for the invite. They, they, it was, uh, they suggested doing this they challenge. They swerved us. It was fun. No, we could have won. They swerved us. It's, 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 they didn't swerve anybody. We're just crap at making predictions. Nick over at Busted Wide Open was not. I'm very good at making predictions. Actually, it's the WWE. It's bad at seeing my predictions Anyways, through. Check out Busted Wide Open. Yeah, do that. They're good guys. Yes, they are. Uh, next up. Oh, we're going to answer questions. Questions. Interesting question. Embryonic reflection. How would Nigel McGuinness gone if he was wrestling on the 205 Live roster today? I'm not that familiar with his work in ring work, but I heard he was he was awesome in Ring of Honor. Like um, he had some really good matches yeah, against uh, Brian Danielson. Yeah, I've seen some of that. I've seen some of his promo work, and it was great. He was like a Guy Ritchie character. Um, and what's interesting about him is that he just he just stopped wrestling because he was like, you know what, WWE's not going to take me. I thought he had like some health issues. I looked into it, and he they, he did like this farewell tour thing that he made. He had like a do, I think I don't know if it was ever, if it actually was made, but he was trying to get a documentary made about his career, basically. And, but and then by the end, I, I don't know if it was like in an inter, I think in a couple interviews he just said, yeah, you know, like uh, you can't really. He wanted it, he wanted to be in the WWE, and he had a tryout, and it didn't go great. And then I think the the hepatitis stuff mm-hmm. played into it. But by the time his career was done. He was basically okay. Like he huh. could have kept on wrestling because all the traces of it were gone or whatever. Um, and then he just decided to stop. Huh. Yeah. And then they hired him on as a, a commentator guy or whatever. So yeah, I was, I was kind of fascinated by that. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. He was just like, yeah, you know, WWE doesn't want me, you know, can't make a whole lot of money doing. Like, apparently he just, you know, wanted to make some more money and, or I, I think it was a combination of, you know what? I'm only going to make so much money, and it's killing my body, so yeah, yeah, why yeah. am I going to keep doing yeah. this? So that was kind of interesting. Um, unretired Dwayne Nix. What's going to happen to Nikki Cross now that she wasn't called up to Maine with the rest of Sanity? Well, we she was not in the locker room, which might be a big tell. So I think they're probably going to have – they might do oh, something yeah, with Dakota too. Kai like quickly and just have her get killed again. 
Um, and then Nikki Cross will, she'll show up. I, that could be. God, I really freaking hope so. Like, it's weird. She hasn't been anywhere. I know. She hasn't really been uh, on TV much. Yeah. El Pupacabra, if you had full creative control over a member from 205 Live, who would it be and how would you repackage them? How would you repackage Jack Gallagher? I mean, what he was doing during the Mustafa Ali match is what he should be doing. I mean, I just tell him to do that mm -hmm. full time. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm happy he's not wrestling in his, uh, you know, business casual attire anymore. Yeah, he's I wasn't. Those, I wasn't huge on the on the candy stripes. Yeah, yeah. He's got green pants now. Yeah, that look old timey. It works. Um, We're doing terrible at this. At no, I thought package. about him, but I think for him, for me, in terms of. If it was going to be him, it would just be more stylistically how he wrestles. You know what I would do, man? If I had full creative control, I would do, I would take whoever, whatever team did those Roderick Strong family time promos, and I would put them on Cedric Alexander mm -hmm. and say, let's humanize him, please. Let's, let's get some relatability. Because I guarantee if you just show what a day in the life of Cedric Alexander would be, it is like in a really cool documentary format, like a short series that lasted maybe three or four episodes of 205 Live. Yeah. He'd be over. Yeah. You know? GM Spud with the departure of Sanity and AOP. Who will be the next tag team to be called up? TM61. I mean, they're ready to be they're called the up now. Yeah, yeah, They're, they're, they're the up most right polished. Yeah, they're the most polished. And if they're not going to do anything with NXT. Uh, Alex Foster, which NXT stars should change their finishers? Isn't Adam Coles. The Shining Wizard. I'm not huge on the Shining Wizard as a finisher. I don't know why they don't use You're Last just, Shot. He's been doing it. That's like they use that for his signature. It's weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. that should be a finisher. I yeah. agree with that yeah. completely. Because the Shining Wizard, I'm not, I mean, it's 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 cool for some people, but you're just running and like, you're just running and throwing Here's your legs at people. Here's the only thing I can think of, and this is very flimsy rationale, given uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish's like MMA pedigree in their background, mm. how it influenced their style. Maybe they wanted some sort of striking finisher. More for, in line with what they do. Maybe yeah, you might be right about that. Of. <clears throat> um, Joe Shea with Sanity, CN Almas, and Iconics all finally making their main roster debuts. Power rank superstars left on NXT most deserving of being called up. I mean, there's a lot of people like EC3, like Ricochet, who probably could have gone straight to main. Adam Cole could have gone straight to main. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I feel like uh, Alistair is going to have that title for a while. Yeah, I don't know. There's so many people. I mean, I know that's why they, I know that's why they had the uh, the North American Championship, you know, to to get something else for people to chase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's so much talent there. Um, it's just it. The scene is kind of just different from when it was Shinsuke and Finn and Samoa that's Joe true. during that era. There's so many more top level talents that they have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they might be pushing people through NXT quicker now. So I yeah, I kind of wonder if the days of a long title reign are kind of behind them. But I don't know. Uh, Robert Chacon, what cruiserweight tag teams from the indies do you want to make, excuse me, 205 Live more real? Real. A tag team from the independent level in 205 Live. Yeah. Uh, Lucha Brothers. Penta. Oh, my God. Ray man. Phoenix. Is Penta, is, is Penta under 205? Oh, I don't know. He seems like a big dude. Doesn't He's he? not that tall. Really? When we went to the last, we went to Bola. I walk, he walked past me. I think he's shorter than I am, or about my same height. Really? I think so. That's kind of he's kind of a thick dude. though. Yeah, I know, I know. How do you? Oh, zero M. No, oh, here we go. I wonder if Wikipedia has the correct info on him. It says uh, he's five eleven, two oh seven. Oh, okay, yeah. So he could be. Yeah. So like, he's about my same height then. That's a good answer. <clears throat> The Young Bucks. <laughs> Put them on 205 Live. Oh, Aaron Smith says uh, Motor City Machine Guns. That's a good answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. That's a really good answer, actually. I don't know how tall the Christ brothers are, but I, I really like them. Um, Elias Ghoul. Um, they've been talking about a surprise next week during the main event. Is it possible related to the tag titles we've been hearing rumors about? Wait, wait what's that again? 205 Live, talking about a surprise next week during the main event. Oh, could be. I didn't notice any talk about a surprise next week, but 
Maybe they'll debut the 205 Live tag titles next week. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> Baron the Cat Taxidermist. It's not really a question, but an observation. It's been four years since I got back into wrestling, and I still can't get over how NXT is the only show that's name is not an acronym, but an abbreviation. Yeah, it is weird. I've I've stopped can't, thinking about that. I, rem- I I very vividly remember, well, not vividly, but I do remember when they announced the cancellation of ECW and announced the formation of NXT. And it never really dawned on me. I was like, oh, that's just a clever way of saying next. Okay, that's cool. But yeah, it is weird that it doesn't stand for anything. Well, it stands for next. It stands for a word. It doesn't really stand for a word. I guess stands for makes, yeah, I guess that's Star- technically correct. Star of Ink Clothing. With Buddy Murphy failing his way in, would you not love to see Bull Dempsey come back and do the Bull Fit gimmick with Buddy? No, I would not like to see that. That would be terrible. I do want to see something else like Buddy Murphy. How about this? Uh, even better. Buddy Murphy, like walking out, like a day in the life of Buddy Murphy, and people like just saying, hey, fatty. <laughs> Wow. Hey, hey, fat boy. And he's like, he's like, look at me. I look amazing. You people look. It's like an episode of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> uh, Jerome Murray, do you guys think Zelina Vega should wrestle on main? And what's her ceiling? Yeah, I think she should. I want her in the exact same role. Like she does wrestling stuff to help her clients. Yeah, she but is maybe a have business a, person. Maybe have an occasional match here or there. Yeah, I'm fine with that. If it works for the story. I don't want her in the division, though. No. Oh, this is a good question. Tommy T. Hey, friend, my question is, who are some of your favorite wrestlers that wouldn't make your respective top 10 list the best of all time? For example, Tommy T. says he loves Eddie Guerrero, but he wouldn't make my list. Oh, of all time? Yeah. Top 10 of all time? <laughs> I mean, there's two, there's two different ways to look at it. It's like the best of all time versus favorites. Like Eddie would definitely make my top 10 favorite of all time. Okay. But I don't know if he'd make the top 10 best. I'm trying to go through my head who might be the top 10. I mean, it's such a subjective. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm like top 10 of all time. I don't know. I haven't really thought about just the generic idea of the top 10 wrestlers of all time. Yeah, I haven't either. I thought about doing a countdown on our 10 favorite wrestlers. Yeah. Because Eddie would probably make that. Top 10 favorite wrestlers. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know we have our thing about what our three criteria are, but Mm -hmm. like the top 10 wrestlers, I don't know. We have to actually do research if we we have to come up with an actual criteria like draw, draw in ring ability, promo ability. Must be good. That's covering our criteria. <laughs> Those three are in good. Yeah. Legacy. Okay. Yeah. Legacy. And then kayfabe. That's title wins and stuff like that. Okay. Well, there you that's go. That's why the criteria is so good. Being yeah. Good. It kind of covers everything, doesn't it? Legacy. Kayfabe. I mean. In the top ten all times, got to be Ric Flair, right? You got to have Flair. You got to have uh, Bruno's Bruno. got to be in there, right? Yeah, you should yeah. probably have Luthez. Yeah. Um, once you start going back that far, I just pff, I don't oh, know. I know. You know, I don't know. I think Luthez had like the belt for. I mean, Ricky Dojan, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, I, think I mean, if if the, th- the thing is, if you start going back that far. Then people like, yeah, like Eddie Guerrero, like is Stone Cold Steve Austin in the top 10 of all time? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know, I know. I don't know. But like you have like HBK. He's you know arguably the greatest in-ring performer of all time, but then. Was he much of a draw, you know? Yeah. I mean, Dave Meltzer had that conversation. Like he was, you know, Twitter was, oh, you don't consider HBK one of the top draws of all time. And he's like, well, he factually wasn't, mm-hmm. you know. Um. So, I don't know, like top 10 of all, that's, that's like a really broad question. Yeah. Um, CM Punk finds it insulting. If he could swap three people who did get called up with three people who didn't, who would it be? He would swap uh, Noe Jose with Cassius Ono. Yes. No, that is no. He is, Thayer Thabata has it exactly correct. Well, actually, I'd rather see Cassius Ono go to SmackDown so he can be in the same show as Cesaro. Okay, yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. But I don't know if I want to swap anybody out that did get called up from SmackDown. Let's keep him in NXT. 
Because then you're saying either you the Almas Iconics, Sanity or Iconics Almas all stay Sanity. And they all should be where the, on the main roster. Yeah. No, you're right. But man. the general principle, point of the question, yeah. No way, Jose, for Cassius Ono would be fantastic. God, yeah, I know, man. I don't know. Mm. Why isn't Cassius Ono being called up yet? I know. Hey, man. The only thing I think of is maybe the, the you know, maybe his role, he's got a role of something like, like performer coach or something, but I don't know if that's mm-hmm. the case. I have no idea. Alex Foster said, here's the thing. Nobody drew back then. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Nobody drew back <clears throat> then. Uh, uh, Michael Robinson, how do you think Triple H feels about his NXT call-ups getting lost in the shuffle or unable to get footing like Ty and, well, Ty? Well, I've heard that, I read that he, he, what he wanted was like no one get called up without a six month plan. Yeah. And honestly, that doesn't always happen. Yeah. I mean, you've seen that with Apollo Crews. We've seen that with Ty. Here's the thing about Triple H though. He's a big self-starter guy. So if you look at Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal, he always talks about those guys, those guys who were gone from the WWE, worked their butts off, changed themselves came back even stronger, which is totally true. Yeah. I would imagine he has the same philosophy. You get called up. You need to do something to make a name for yourself. And I totally get the philosophy of, well, if he's not given an opportunity, but I mean, Ty's been on TV a lot, you know, at some point, either you're going to adapt and, you know, stand out in some way. And it's look, the general philosophy of life isn't fair kind of applies there as well. It's like, well, Ty could be doing everything he possibly knows to do to stand out. Sometimes it's a matter of luck. It's like sometimes you just hit on something that happens to work that you couldn't have preconceived. Um, and then you just, you know, you end up getting released or you're just in jobber status in, per- in perpetuity. Mm-hmm. But if you didn't do, if you didn't, you know, either either you survive or you don't. And I would imagine some of that, you know, Triple H can only do so much. And then somebody gets called up and, well. You know, yeah. If you don't, if you don't fight for make it, make the most of the time you you have. Then you know, and that's not always within your control. Yeah, I know. You know, there's so many variables in play, especially it seems like. But it's like if if you look at Ty, and I'm not I'm not like criticizing or saying he needs to change everything and stuff like that, but he hasn't really changed anything about his presentation, and that could very well be a creative, you know, uh, mandate. You know, no, we we want you the way you are. So I don't know what he could do. Mm-hmm. Add some tattoos, get rid of his weird haircut, grow out his beard. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you could yeah, do or what you're allowed to do. Yeah. But obviously something needs to change if he wants more TV time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways. Is that today's show? Are we good? I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. Good. This is a good question. Nicholas Grosskirth. One more. One more. With it only being April... How many five-star matches will Johnny Gargano end the year with? Is there anybody else? He called out Aleister Black. Um, I'm not sure if Aleister Black is a five-star machine guy. I'm guessing that Gargano and Chomper are going to have at least one more match. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Um, who do you think? Let me ask you this. Who do you think is going to be in NXT longer, Gargano or Aleister Black? My gut tells me Aleister. Really interesting. Here's here's a possibility: Gargano versus Ricochet. Oh, whoa, yeah, okay. There you go. If there's... if if they they have a match at a takeover, yeah, the possibility is there for a five star match. One more five star match for Gargano this year. Good. Anyways, yeah, that's it. That's it for the show. Yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Until next time, talk to you guys later. Bye.